Welcome back everyone. I'm going to go over the details for the upcoming competition happening on March 5th, 2024, which features the Apple Cider meta. Apple Cider is a new item and part of a new production chain that's been added to the game. Although I think this production chain is very similar to the wine production chain since it also involves the process of making bottles. After I go over the details, I have a build here that I will be showcasing to give you a great idea on how to make a competitive build for this competition brought to you by one of the members in the dub community. As always, the official details are on the Common Ground World announcements channel and the Gala Games Discord, and you can find an invite link to the Gala Games Discord in the description of the video. So the event is called Cider Craze. It's gonna start March 5th and end three days later. Meta is to sell apple cider. The trade time is 20 seconds, and it only costs one gasoline per trade, which is very easy to work with, so that's not gonna be an issue. Biome is a desert facing the south, with the north edge being a mountain, east and west edges being a river and the south edge also being a desert they have provided us with an image of the starter town so i will be showing you this it of course comes with an oil seat and two windmills a silo a storehouse and two wheat fields a couple tree farms basically you can get started by making some flour with this setup which is convenient because the cash boost is jam and flour. Flour especially being tripled in cash from 2,000 to 6,000 each. So flour will be a great choice on what you can sell in order to gather up all the cash that you need in order to finish your design. Now the rewards are the standard gala rewards for reaching the top 1,200. Apple cider is crafted in the brewery, which is a new building. And the craft requirements for apple cider is five apples, one water drum, one sugar, two yeast and one glass bottle yeast is also a new item and that can be crafted in the bakery and the craft requirements for that is one water drum and two flour so both of these crafts need water drums so it is recommended that you supply passive water drums by utilizing water pumps next to the building as for glass bottles those are made in the glass factory and they are previously known as wine bottles they have changed the name to make them more universal since now you can just use bottles for wine or bottles for other beverages like apple cider and more beverages to come so the craft requirements and all the details for these bottles are exactly the same the craft requirement being three silica one chromium and one limestone and the craft time being 60 seconds the brewery costs 750,000 cash without the use of any nfts to reduce it and 10 lumber 10 wood and 10 energy in order to build and has wages of 750 per minute there is also a new NFT that has been released with this competition and that one is called the Masterful Distillery. It is a rare NFT and the utility is as follows. It acts as a brewery building. It comes with two brewmaster units who each walk twice as fast and work for half the wages. So the total wages is the same as the in-game building but because you are having two workers you're paying each one half of them so the wage is still 750 per minute just in case you're confused about that and the building itself cast half the shade the regular brewery building cast two shade whereas the nft version masterful distillery only cast one shade they both still require a road in order to operate there are 350 in supply in the gala game store and costs 250 dollars each if you are interested in picking up this nft you can use the link in the description of the video now as for my thoughts and opinions on this nft since this is a new building and currently the only craft that can be made in this building is apple cider i don't think this nft provides enough utility if you are interested in an nft that would be more useful for this competition i would suggest looking into a wheat stand up to a legendary wheat stand which would be the most useful because of the passive wheat it can provide to all the windmills so you can make flour and also a sugarcane stand personally i own a couple of christmas sugarcane stands and each one of those provide two passive sugarcane which can help a 
lot when making sugar. Now, if you're a more advanced player and you're looking for a higher budget NFT to help you break the limits for this competition, I would suggest looking into the Crystal Sanctum, which would provide you with one passive silica, chromium, and limestone to all the buildings next to it, which helps so much with the glass bottle production and saves you a lot of space and a lot of resources. Before we take a look at this magnificent build, over the weekend, I created an event on my Discord where players could submit their no NFT apple cider design, and I would be selecting a winner and showcasing their build on my video. So what you see here is not created by me, but created by the winner themselves, Team Storm NFTs TGM. So congratulations to them. They will be winning a $30 prize. And I will also be selecting two other valid entries and they will both win a $10 prize. I will probably do that draw sometime on Tuesday and I'll announce the official winners on my Discord. This is an event that I wanted to run and if people like it, then I will run more of these to showcase other builds from community members because some people do amazing builds. Now, I don't want them to be too amazing because we don't want to spill the best builds to everyone, right? But in this case, I have chosen the winner and the winning design is right here. I'm going to be showing you and well, let's just take a look at it. So this apple cider design is doing 76.6 .6 apple ciders per hour. I've been running it for seven hours now and Team Storm claimed it was doing 81 per hour whenever he submitted the design and I do believe him it, it is possible to actually hit a higher number than what I'm making here so I'm gonna take a look at the production monitor here just do a quick scroll and then look at some things individually so we know the requirements for apple cider water drums isn't really important we don't have to look at water drums because they are passive for the apple cider but let's take a look at apples first apples at 400 145 per hour and it's five apples per apple cider so that is enough apples to hit 89 apple cider per hour so it is overproducing apples for sure as for sugar it's doing 93 sugar per hour it's only one sugar per apple cider so that's enough for over 90 apple cider per hour on the sugar looking at glass bottles 89 glass bottles per hour so that would be enough for 89 once again just like the apples and then yeast so so it's two yeast per apple cider. It looks like it's making about 167 yeast per hour. Rough math, that is about enough for 83 apple cider per hour. So I can see that this design is making enough materials to do 83 apple cider per hour. Now I'm just going to label it as 76 per hour because that's what I'm doing. But I see that the materials are here for 83 per hour. So why exactly am I not getting the 83 or the 81 per hour that he claimed it would make when he submitted the, this design. Well, although I don't know exactly, I think that has something to do with the way I positioned my brewery or the way I started off the build. But what I do know for sure is if I were to tweak this myself and add another brewery, I'm pretty sure it could hit 80 per hour, maybe even a little higher than that. So that's a simple thing that I could fix myself. But for the purpose of this showcase i'm not doing any adjustments like that when i'm showcasing the build but i see it as a very easy improvement now going beyond that might take some work i mean there's potential to even push this to 85 or even to 89 per hour but it would be pretty hard to figure out this build is already really impressive it utilizes a subgrid to take advantage of extra space here and yeah it's just so impressive i'm gonna explain everything going on here starting with flower and sugar so you're gonna need tractors in order to harvest crops so there are seven tractors for wheat we have 17 wheat yields now most of the crops here are actually negatively impacted by shade so that's why there's so many wheat fields which may seem counterintuitive but it does help you find that balance on exactly how much wheat or sugar cane that you may need by having most of these on a red craft timer i'm sure there could be a more efficient way to do this but for this case it does seem to work now for sugarcane there are three sugarcane fields those all get stored in the silo 
So there's two silos, one on each side. And flour and sugar also requires wood. So that's why we have loggers. There are seven loggers in this design. There's one in the corner over here. And then there are 15 tree farms in order for the loggers to harvest wood from them. And they can take them directly to the windmills. So there are a total of 34 windmills. I'm going to show you the ones making sugar. So there are seven of them making sugar on a red craft timer. And then the other 27 windmills are all making flour. Also on a red craft timer, there are no green craft timer windmills in this design. And the flour and sugar gets stored in the storehouse. And there are two storehouses. Next, I'll talk about the glass bottle production, starting with the lumber mills, which accept lumber. And then the lumber gets taken to a lumber yard. And we will also need water drums in order to actually craft the minerals. So so there are four water facilities. All of them have the three passive water from the rivers that are on the edges. So they can easily craft the water drums and they will take it to a warehouse of which there are two warehouses right in front of them. And from there, there are these six mines. The miners will go and pick up the water drums as well as the lumber. And the mines all have the passive energy that they need from the four power plants in this design. So for these six iron mines, there are three of them making chromium, which would be this one, this one, and this one. And then the other three iron mines are making limestone. So that gives us the chromium and limestone that we need for glass bottles, but we also need silica. For that, a forklift is used in order to pick up silica from a sand mine, of which there are three sand mines, and all of the sand mines have the two passive energy that they need, and they also have three passive passive sandy because we are on a desert biome. So a desert biome will give three passive sandy to all the tiles in the area. So that's all it needs for a green craft timer for the sand mines. And that'll allow you to quickly output silica. So that gives you the silica, chromium and limestone that is required to make glass bottles at a glass factory of which there are three glass factories. And then the bottles are stored in the nearby warehouses. And finally, the yeast and apple cider production. So there are four bakeries here, all making yeast. They all have the passive water drums that we mentioned earlier. And there are eight breweries, all making apple cider. For the breweries, it requires apples, the only item I haven't talked about here. So those are picked up from these apple trees, which have a five water requirement and also a very high craft time. So that's why a lot of them are necessary. And each apple cider also needs five apples. That's another reason why so many of these are necessary but there are a total of 46 apple trees the apples are also picked up by the tractors and taken to the nearby silo and that gives you all the materials required in order to make the apple cider there's also the gasoline setup which i would say is not the standard gasoline setup this is a different setup so there are two water pumps which allows the use of three power plants like so and that gives all the passive water drums and the passive energy required to make gasoline in this this refinery right here and as for the refinery on the side over here this one is making petroleum and it has the two passive crude oil that it needs from the oil seep that is over here and that allows it to have passive everything to make the petroleum it stores the petroleum here in the fuel storage the fuel storage is facing this refinery that way it doesn't overproduce petroleum now if you have it facing like this or even this refinery it's going to overproduce petroleum petroleum and really just make sure you auto sell petroleum and gasoline just in case regardless of what you do but he had it set up this way and that is also the way I recommend you have your fuel storage facing just so you don't end up with too much petroleum or more petroleum than gasoline and for the trade setup one trade pier is all you need like I mentioned earlier trade times shouldn't give you any uh, issue and this build is very balanced so you're not going to be selling a whole lot of stuff anyways here's what the auto trade looks looks like you can have everything on 10 with the exception of wheat and sugarcane. I decided to put those at 12 just to make sure there's always wheat and sugarcane for
for the windmills to pick up. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. I am using buildhub.net, which is a great tool you can use to design your build for practice or for competition. You can find a link to this in the description of the video. So this build has a total cost of about 12.8 million and the wages are 18,430 per minute. You will have no issue paying the wages once your design is done and you're selling apple cider. As for this design, the 12.8 million cost isn't that much, especially given the flower cash boost. So for this design or for any design you may be making, I don't think that you will have much issues getting all the cash you need in order to finish the design. Now you can find the file for this visualizer on my Discord server and an invite link to my Discord server is also on the description of the video. And of course, I tested this design without the use of any NFTs that would affect the production rates so I can validate that it does indeed work without any NFTs. And just in case you didn't notice, yes, this build does utilize subgrid on the roads in order to fit maybe an extra windmill here and it also does the same thing on this side subgrid on the roads to fit an extra windmill maybe two extra windmills or so but the subgrid placement there does actually help out since it provides more space for windmills. So that is just something I wanted to mention and something you can keep in mind if you ever want to mess with the subgrid placement in order to further improve your own design. So there you have it. I think this is an incredible design for the upcoming competition. It's very competitive in my opinion, and hopefully it gives you an idea on how to create or improve your current design. If you found this helpful, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Once again, congrats. Congratulations to Team Storm NFTs TGM for this design and for winning the event. I plan on hosting more events like this in the near future. If you have ideas on how I should do it, let me know on the Discord. I am interested in doing this again, but making it so that it's a random winner. Like I'm not going to choose the winner. I'm going to spin a wheel and one of the valid entries gets chosen and I just showcase their build. I think that would be more fair, like perhaps the build that gets chosen isn't the best but it's the one that got selected you know I, I just think that would be interesting so i just wanted to mention that as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching